In this video, I'll be demonstrating the technique for applying strain gauges to a piece of aluminum. This lab is an exercise intended to be a precursor to the pressure vessel exercise where students attach functioning strain gauges to soda cans. The gauges used in this lab are non-functioning, they're practice patterns as they're referred to as, and they are free from the manufacturer micro measurements. So we use them as students are practicing the technique of applying strain gauges. There are several items that are necessary for this lab exercise. Starting with the tools. We'll need a soldering iron or soldering station for applying the wires at the pads of the strain gauge. A pair of scissors come in handy, an X-Acto knife, a pair of diagonal cutters, tweezers can be helpful for handling the gauges. In terms of supplies, we need the practice patterns themselves, a rosin solvent, a catalyst, solder, isopropanol, Micro Measurements M-PREP conditioner and neutralizer. A few gauze pads for each student. Cotton swabs. Each student needs no more than five or six of these. Super glue. A glass slide is convenient for handling the gauges as I'll show later, but it's not critical. A small piece of aluminum that's two inches by one inch roughly that we attach the strain gauge to. Those small pieces, by the way, are cut from larger aluminum pieces on a shear. We purchased this material from Granger. We'll need tape. Regular cellophane tape will work, but this is a Kapton based tape. Of course, we'll need wire to solder down to the pads for connect, later connection to a strain indicator. Of course, these are non-functioning pads, so we couldn't connect it to an indicator, but nevertheless, students need to practice soldering. I'm going to start off by cleaning the area with isopropanol and a gauze pad. At this point in time, students should be wearing goggles Latex gloves, I would say, are, are optional. Later on, they become a little bit of a hassle as you're working with the tape as it wants to stick to the gloves. After that has been done, we're going to continue on with a wet sand with 320 grit paper. This, by the way, I forgot to mention when going over the supplies that are necessary. We're going to use that combined with the M-PREP conditioner. The M-PREP conditioner is a light acidic solution. A few drops. I'm told by the manufacturer that the acidity of this is about the same as Coca-Cola. I'm going to do about 10 to 15 strokes back and forth. Now I want to make sure that I get an area that's big enough for the application of the strain gauge. I don't need to necessarily sand the entire piece. Now I've done more than 10 to 15 strokes, but I'm just trying to make sure I get an area big enough. 10 to 15 is a recommendation. If you go more, that's fine. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to clean with a gauze pad. After doing so, I'm going to continue to clean and etch with the conditioner. I'm going to start off with a cotton swab, apply a few more drops, getting my finger near the end of the tip of the swab. I'm going to swab that area with a decent amount of force. You'll notice that as I start, the end of the cotton swab is dark gray. 
we want to continue this process until the swab comes up relatively clean. This might take two to three cotton swabs. So you can see the difference. That's the first and second set of swipes. Relatively clean now. I'll go ahead and do a couple more drops using the other side of my swab. I'll finish off by applying a couple more drops of the conditioner and using a single wiping motion with a gauze pad, I will wipe off the surface. I'm going to clean the backside the, or the table rather and the back side of the aluminum. The next step in the process since we have a slightly acidic solution that we've used on the surface we want the pH to be a particular value and so micro measurements makes a neutralizer to balance the effect of that original conditioner. I'm going to take a few drops of that and again like I did with the conditioner I'm going to swab it in the area where the gauge will go down. Should be relatively clean but I'll do it one more time with a few more drops. And like I did with the conditioner, I'm going to take the neutralizer at the very end of this, put a few drops, and with a gauze pad, do a single wiping motion to remove the conditioner, pardon me, the neutralizer. At this point in time, the surface is prepared and ready to apply the strain gauge. In order to handle the strain gauge, I'm going to take a glass slide, and again, the glass so slide is optional, but I'm going to take it, and it's been cleaned with isopropanol using a pair of tweezers. I'm picking up one of the practice strain gauges. You'll notice there's a shiny side and a dull side. The shiny side would be the side with the active gauge and the pads that can be soldered to. So we want to make sure that that side is up. Placing that on my clean glass slide, I'm going to take a piece of tape about two inches long and I'm going to use it to pick up and handle the strain gauge. Now, of course, I'm going to also probably grab the glass slide, so I'll have to remove that. But now I have the ability to handle that strain gauge. Normally, if I were applying this on a critical piece of equipment, the position would be important, and so I want to make sure that I can handle it correctly. Now at this point in time, if position was critical, I would take a very fine pencil, a mechanical pencil of 0.5 millimeter lead, for example, and I would take a straight edge and draw a line down the, this axis and a perpendicular line to help me orient the gauge as I'm placing it down. In this particular scenario, it's not critical. So I'm gonna go ahead and just work in that area where I was cleaning, trying to align best I can with the edges of the aluminum. And once I've done that, I'm going to now peel back so that I can access the back of the gauge. So again, I'm now able to access the back of the gauge. After I apply glue, I'll be able to lay it down and it'll go, it'll go down into the position 
that I want the gauge to be in. At this point, I'm going to apply a catalyst. This catalyst will prepare the surface for the super glue. When I take the brush out of the bottle, I'm going to swipe it on the neck 10 times or so. We don't want a lot of this, just enough to put a thin film over the back side of the gauge. We want to make motions that go across the entire length. If you go halfway and pull up, you'll leave a pool of this, which takes longer to dry. So using a sweeping action all the way across. We're going to wait one minute for the catalyst to dry. If there's too much on there, if it's pooled up, you'll need to wait longer. You need to wait until you see that pool of liquid dry up. Once the catalyst has had a chance to dry for one to two minutes, it's time to apply the super glue, the M-Bond 200 from MicroMeasurements. I'm going to be placing a single drop in the fold between the tape and the aluminum. Notice I've left a small space in between the edge of the gauge and the aluminum. What we want is that drop of glue to be wiped across the face, the backside of that strain gauge. By doing so, we'll get a uniform layer of glue between the, the strain gauge and the aluminum. So again, taking a single drop of glue and sometimes, by the way, it helps to tape down the aluminum at this point to keep it from moving around. It'll put a single drop. And then wipe. Now, of course, this is super glue. So it could, if it leaks out from the edges of the tape, could get on my finger. So I'm going to quickly put a piece of gauze in between my finger and the tape. And at this point, we need to hold the, the tape on for at least a minute. After waiting one to two minutes, it's now time to pull off the tape. It doesn't hurt to wait longer, but you want to wait at least, I would say, one to two minutes. I'm going to pull off the gauze, and you can note that it's sticking a little bit because of the glue that seeps around the edges of the tape. I'm going to peel off the tape. When I peel it off, I want to almost fold the tape back on itself. This will minimize the chance of pulling up the strain gauge with the tape. Afterwards, I'm going to do a couple of things to protect the strain gauge. First of all, the strain gauges that we use that are functioning type have the grid on the top side and it is not protected. So to get the students in the habit of protecting that, I'm going to take and put a piece of tape over what would be the grid area. The main thing is I want to leave the two pads, the large pads, exposed. So when I tape, I'm not going to tape over those because I need to solder to those pads. Again, this will protect the sensitive grid of a real strain gauge. I'm also going to place a piece of tape on the aluminum itself near the pads, but again, just on the aluminum. The reason I'm doing that will be clear when I begin to solder the wire down. So I'll wait till that point to explain that. I notice that uh, at this point things are moving around a little bit for the piece of aluminum. If you want, again, you can tape down both sides to make sure that it's uh, not going to move on you. At this point, we're ready to solder. I'm going to start off by taking a short piece of wire, and I'll move this for now. Taking a short piece of wire, on one end, that would be the end that would be connecting to our strain indicator. Obviously, we would need a longer piece of wire, but right now we're just practicing soldering, so I'm not going to even worry about stripping that. I'll talk more about that when we discuss the pressure vessels. The other end, though, we do need to strip back a small amount so that we can solder to our strain gauge. 
As far as stripping goes, I just take an X-Acto knife and back off about uh, an eighth to a quarter inch and I score the, the wire itself, the insulation, I'm sorry, and then flip it over and try to do the same in the same spot. Again, trying not to go in, into the conductor inside. At this point, I'll fold it back and forth to try to open up that score. And once I do that, I can usually take my fingernails and pull the insulation off. For strain gauges, we use three wire conductors, but two of those wires need to be twisted together. So I'm going to take the black and the white and twist those together, and we're going to leave the red by itself. We won't go into the details of why we do this, but it reduces the sensitivity to temperature fluctuations along the length of this wire. If you have a two wire, you are very susceptible to temperature fluctuations along the length of the wire. I've twisted the black and white together and I've also twisted the red just by itself to make it easier to solder. It is critical that students learn how to properly care for the tip of a soldering iron. If it isn't, it can quickly burn and it will make soldering very difficult. So we can either use a damp sponge or a gauze pad to start this process of cleaning the tip. I'm going to take the pad or the gauze pad and just wipe using firm pressure, wipe the end of the soldering iron, the tip of it on that. We always want to make sure we have solder on the tip of our iron. I'm going to take some solder <clears throat> and just coat that surface. Now, depending on what we're doing, we may want more or less solder on the tip, but we've always got to have some. If I have it sitting in the holder, I want to make sure it has a decent amount on it. And when I get done doing that, and if it's too much, I can tape and wrap the soldering iron onto the table and you'll see that the excess comes off. That process of cleaning and reapplying solder should be done often as you are soldering. The first thing I need to do is take the wire that I've stripped and I need to tin the ends of the wire. I do that by putting a small pool of solder on the end of the iron. I'm going to take the wire and set it in that pool of solder. And then taking solder, I'm going to wipe it across there until the wire absorbs that solder. So again, I'm heating the wire itself with the pool of solder at the end of the iron and then wiping the solder across. Now it may be a little bit hard to see, but that solder has been absorbed into the spaces of those individual strands of wire. At this point in time, I'm going to cut back the conductor to only about a sixteenth of an inch or so. The students will think that that's too short and they'll make it longer. That's okay, but it's good to have it as short as possible and we'll see why in a minute. In the same way that I have to tin the wire, we also need to tin the pads of the strain gauge. I'm going to start off by cleaning the tip of my iron. You can see the shiny end that I still have solder on there. That's good. I'm just going to put a small amount of solder on the end at this point. In order to tin the pads of the strain gauge, I'm going to place the end of the solder on the pad itself. Before I do, I'm going to go ahead and tape down the other end of the aluminum. So again, to tin the pad, I place the solder onto the pad, and then I'm going to place my soldering iron on top of that solder. And what I'm going to do is once the solder melts, I'm going to drive my solder in and pull up both at the same time, leaving a small ball of solder on that pad. So again, on the other pad, 
solder goes down first, I'm going to apply firm pressure on top of that. Once the solder melts, I'm going to drive the solder in and pull up both at the same time. That one's a smaller ball. You can see what happened was when I pushed down, I kind of missed the solder and it slid off. I want to make sure I come straight down. I'm going to try it again, cleaning my tip. A little bit more solder. Solder down, tip down, firm pressure, pushing in, releasing same time. And here's a closer view of the tinned solder pads. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and solder down the wire. So that I have my hands free, I'm going to go ahead and tape the wire into position. I'm going to spread out the wires just a little bit to match the spacing of the pads. Taking a small piece of tape. What I'll also do is put a slight curvature into the wire itself so that when I push it down, it will have some force pushing onto the, onto the pads. If you need to reposition with an X-Acto knife, you can do that at this time. Notice that I <clears throat> cut the conductors very short. If they were too long, you would find that the conductor would stretch out into this area, for example, right here. And if either of those wires touch the aluminum, you'll have issues. So for students who often make it too long, I suggested earlier that you put that piece of tape down to cover or insulate the aluminum underneath. That's why we did that a few steps ago. At this point in time, I'm ready to solder. I'm going to clean the pad, or uh, pardon me, clean the end of the, the iron. Applying some fresh solder. Once again, I'm going to hold the solder onto the top of the wire. I'm going to press down, feed, and release at the same time so that I got a nice round joint. Cleaning off my tip, applying solder, solder on top of the joint. Come from above, melt it. You can see that I didn't push down firmly enough and it didn't melt the solder like I want it to. So I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna get that little ball off by just melting the end of the solder. Okay. Did it again. Now you can see that in this particular scenario, the ball of solder gets really close to the, to the other one. That of course would be a problem if they actually touched, but in this case, electrically they're not touching, so it'll work just fine. And that's what we're looking for. We're gonna stop at this point. We've practiced putting down a practice pattern onto the aluminum. For the next video demonstration, we'll be putting down functioning strain gauges onto a soda can for the pressure vessel experiment. At that point in time, we will also look at how to connect the wire to the strain indicator correctly.